Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable Podcast. Today we have Andy with us from... <sighs> I knew that shit was going to be heavy on you. Yeah, let me do that again. Sorry, I'm, I'm rusty. I, I didn't, I didn't Bro, do one last week. Halfway through, I was like, oh, he got it. I know. <laughs> do the intro, idiot. Sorry. My, Damn. I got this. My, my, Hi, my, I'm Andy Inc. I work at Good Kind Tattoo in Chicago. It's Andy underscore Inc. on Instagram. And um, I'll be replacing Cam on the podcast. Thanks, Cam. Yeah. All right. Sh- what did I say? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is so much harder. Yo, we should have a swear jar. <sighs> oh, uh, good. Okay, but what are you going to do with the money? Well, first off, it's not going to be that dollar BS. It's going to be hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> if you it's curse, coming you off your paycheck. <laughs> Which is like within the first seven minutes, like you have a timer going. I this yeah. jar is full. Yeah. <laughs> And tight. I'm just going to physically harm Cam until he curses. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to know the, the the jar has to add up to something. It's a terrible system. You know, it's like you put money in the Starbucks. jar. Some kind of reward. All right. What if it went to the guest? That was about to say. That's like the Ooh. guest's payment. It almost like incentivizes you to get me to curse. <laughs> I, was like, I was trying to think of how I can make that work for me. But I was like, no, I'd just only be getting my own money if I just kept saying. <laughs> she <laughs> put her own what money there. <laughs> if. Cam cursed, you would either have a hundred dollars mm-hmm. or one free curse. Oh, it's a trade. Well, I guess not because the money, money goes back to you. It's still my money. Yeah, yeah. So I can do whatever I want. It's yeah. just win win for you. Yeah, which I'm fine with. I feel like that's that's good. It's in your benefit. Yeah. Kyla, we got any Mason? <laughs> Cam. <laughs> Cam would be broke in one episode. <laughs> All right. So you're in Chicago. Yes. Great segue. <laughs> well, I forgot what we were talking about before. <laughs> we were talking about being late. <laughs> but I think because that's, I feel like a lot of people think of being late as like this much like, oh, I'm just like late to stuff and it's like this much smaller thing. But you're right. It's more about like you're telling people that you're unreliable because you can't do something that's arguably very easy. Now we're just circling back. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, but then on the other hand, like we were already talking about, like it doesn't bother some people, right? So, like, to bring it back to tattooing, like tattooers that show up late for their appointments, which blows my mind because I think it's like, I, it, like in that context, too, where you're, like, providing a service and you've asked, like, hey, we're going to start tattooing, you know, be here for right. your appointment at noon. And it's like, I'm going to come in at one, though. Right. And just, like, you can sit around and do it all. And especially, I mean, <clears throat> you know, like, at least everybody at this table, like, I get to, uh, like, my t- I, t- I tell people my time is worth quite a bit of money, right? right? Like, we provide a luxury service. Nobody needs tattoos, right? Yeah. So it's like people take their hard-earned money, you know? Like, I have clients who, like, save for a long time and stuff mm-hmm. like that. <clears throat> and it's like, to then be, like, late and unprepared to me is just, again, like, it's just super disrespectful. Like, people really look forward to the time that they get to spend with their tattoo artist and like you know like I think there's some level of like people like forget because we do this every single day but it's like you know most of your client like at least for me like most of my clients aren't people who are getting tattooed every month or every other month like I have a lot of clients who it's like you know maybe once a year twice a year they Mm -hmm. get tattooed and like so that day is a really big deal they look forward to it people take work off to come see Mm -hmm. me you know, like, clients use their PTO to come see yeah. me, and it's, like, I don't know. It's, to me, it's not even just about, like, being on time. Like, I'm somebody where it's, like, I try to get to the shop, like, ideally, like, at least 30 minutes early. I like to be set up, because, like, if you come in and like the design, like, I want it to just flow. Like, all right, let's fuck it. Right. You know, like, I was, like, so stoked to tattoo. So the uh, apprenticeship I had was uh, not the greatest for a lot of reasons, like, which I think is... I've, I've started saying, like, oh, like, there's your apprenticeship, and then there's, like, where you actually learned how to tattoo. Sure. And that seems to be, like, very true for, like, pretty much every tattoo I've right. ever talked mm-hmm. to. But um, the guy I apprenticed under, I was still in college, and he was stoked about that. He thought, like, having a college degree was, like, awesome. Cool. And had no desire for me to, like, drop out of school, which is pretty common. Um, so it was, like, I would give him my class schedule, and then it was, like, if the shop was open and I wasn't in class, I needed to be there. Okay. You know? Yeah. So, so I feel like... Yeah, but so, like, the idea of just, like, being at the shop from open to close was, like, very normal to me in the apprenticeship that I had. Um, And then when I started working at other shops, um, like, the first shop I worked at, everybody did realism except for me. So, like, to me, it was really normal to be, like, I was done tattooing around, like, five or six, but I would still stick around until, like, everybody was done for the day at, like, eight. Um, So, I don't know, like, being at the tattoo shop was always, like, 
something I liked. Like I like being right. around tattooers and tattooing. Um, and then like, you know, before I was like busy and booked out, it was like, of course I wanted to be at the shop. Cause like, you know, if somebody emailed, somebody called for a walk-in cause I was never at like a walk-in heavy shop. So that was like a, a rarity. And it was like, I just want a tattoo, man. Like, give me your Roman numerals. Give me your, and <laughs> you know, your cancer script. ribbon. Like yeah. it's going to be the cleanest one that has ever existed. Like I just want a tattoo, Yeah. you know, at the end of the day, like i I feel so lucky that people want my art, but if that wasn't the case, I would still want a tattoo because, like, I enjoy the art form. I enjoy connecting with my clients. Like, I think there's so much more to tattooing than just the art you make. And I think, like, you can see in tattooers whether or not they care about those other things. Are you late for your appointments? No. You're just late for me? <laughs> Do you, like, have it a lot where, like, people are calling and trying to come to walk in and just no one's here? It's happened before. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, like, when, before, like, owning a shop and, like, just being a tattooer, like, I would, you know, you're working with other tattooers. And I would always kind of come into a new shop and, like, look around and feel where everyone was at. And there was always those tattooers that were constantly trying to improve and advance and those other tattooers that were, like, I made it and I'm fine with being here the rest of my life. Yeah. You know? And... You know, one thing we've talked about a lot is I'm always looking for the things that I think majority is not willing to do. And like, those are the things I'm trying to do because I think it'll set us apart. Um, I'd get, you know, I'd get to those shops and I'd be like, these guys aren't willing to come in early. They're not willing to do that and like do all those things. And with other people, you know, like Scott, Skinny, all these guys I work with and, and they were been on board with that mindset too. And like everyone advances. Mm hmm. And, like, those people that were showing up late, that were, like, not treating their clients well, they're still at that fucking shop doing yeah. nothing, yeah. making no, no extra dollars yeah. than they were seven years ago, you know? So I think it really is about, like, what do you, like, want to bring to your own career? Like, at any, like, kind of commission-style job, it's as, as hard as you work or as lazy as you are, that's, that's what yeah. you're going to get, right? Yeah, and there's almost to a degree of that of, like, <clears throat> what you feel like your clients owe you. Like, I feel like sometimes there's this, this weird attitude in tattooing where it's like, clients are so lucky that, like, we're going to tattoo them. You know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> if people don't get tattooed by you, yeah. like, if my clients don't get tattooed by, like, that's how I pay my bills. You know what I mean? Like, I, feel like I, it's like flipped I need my clients. Yeah, it's flipped. Know? It's almost like you're lucky that people want to get tattooed yeah, by I you. Yeah, I feel you so know? lucky that people want to get tattooed yeah. by me. I feel so, I mean, I always hate to use this term because people use it so sarcastically, but, like, I feel truly fucking blessed that it's, like, not only do people, like, want to get tattooed by me and, like, want like what is like kind of my voice in art, but like to a point where it's like, oh, I actually can't take on all the work I'm offered. Like that's fucking incredible. Like yeah. that's being a successful artist. Like how many people want that in life to like pay their bills making art and like never get that opportunity, Right. you know? And it's like really cool tattooing right now where it's like tattooing's like having like a moment where it's like very fashionable. Like I that's how I feel about it, like, the current popularity of tattooing. Like, you can push the extremes of it right now. Like, you can do yeah, out-of-the-box like stuff. Yeah, like, so many people, want, yeah. like, more people than ever want to get tattooed right now, right? And, like, that opportunity is, like, it's exactly that. Like, it's an opportunity. Like, the idea that it's, like, going to last forever or that, like, you're, you know, that your clients owe you anything, you know? Like, obviously, respect and being on time and, like, being good to each other, you know, just being good people <laughs> in general, yeah. what I feel like people owe each other anyways, but, like, the, like, we're talking about, like, showing up late, showing up unprepared, like, it's just stuff that, like, gives me ick, you know what I mean? Because I know, like, when I'm getting tattooed, like, I've, I've been tattooed where it's, like, I've shown up and, like, the artist didn't really actually have any kind of plan mm -hmm. uh, for my tattoo, and they're, like, figuring it out while I'm there, and, like, I was there for, like, you know, two or four hours, and it's, like, We've had this on the books for months. You know what I mean? Like, you had so much time and opportunity. And, like, I get it. Like, 100%. I tattoo. Yeah. Like, sometimes stuff gets really busy, and I don't get to work on stuff as early as I want to have worked on it. Mm -hmm. But, like, to have your client come in and have, like, nothing prepared at all, and, like, you're going to go draw it in the back right now. Yeah. It's really fucking wild to me. It's even more fucked up. To, I feel like it's almost more fucked up to do it to another artist. Well, I, like, they know the deal. What so I know, I think it's about, I agree. I think it's about communication. Because, like, I do know some artists that either tattoo seven days a week or, uh, you know, five or six. 
and have that method, but they're upfront about it. They're like, this is what's going to happen mm -hmm. on your day. You're going to come in at 10 o'clock. We're going to go over design. Then you're going to, you know, go grab lunch or, or get busy while I draw it up. We're going to start at 12 or 1. And I feel like if you know that going in, maybe that's all right. But expectations. Right. right? But Managing if you just show up and it's like, all right, I'm going to go figure it out while I eat some food in the back. And you're like, oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. Yeah. Or just like, you you know, like you see them come in, like they're, they're late. You see them come in, like holding their coffee. And like, I've been like, I'm not pretending I've never been late to an right, appointment right. and like never been late and like showing up with fucking breakfast in my hands. Right. Like I've a hundred percent. I've <laughs> yeah, done uh, that. You want some? Yeah. You know what I mean? I Where, hate that. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't ask. <laughs> I know that's your biggest pet peeve. Bro, what, yeah. What's your biggest yeah. pet peeve? Like people being late, but like still showing up Walking with food. Walking in with Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, he's like, if you didn't get the food, you'd be on time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hate that. I mean, I get it. We all got to eat. It's going to be at work. <laughs> Uber yeah, eats, bro. Totally. Seriously, man. <laughs> you know, not that, yeah, exactly. Not that I've ever been that person, but it's like, to me, that's it's like an exception to the rule. It's like I'm having a particularly bad morning where I'm running late and it's like if I if even if I think I'm running like five minutes late like I've already emailed my client like mm -hmm. an hour ago yeah like I have like the same you know morning routine and maybe that's being like a person in recovery that yeah. my life is like so kind of <laughs> yeah. regimented compared to maybe other tattooers but like I already know at like 10 a.m if I'm not going to be there at 11 30 yeah. and be ready before you get in based on how you're earlier schedule things yeah it's weren't. not like i'm never surprised if i'm late in the morning you know what i mean it's not it's never been a surprise like i think once there was um just because like where i live in chicago my driveway like is on a major road instead of into an alley and like some construction guys like had left their truck oh, in front man. of my driveway <laughs> and i had to like go but like you know what I mean? but that's happening yeah. to me at 11 for an appointment i have at noon right you know what i mean and it's like the odds that this is Something gonna make me control. late is like really small um, cause I just like being a half hour early to set up and stuff, mm -hmm. but also please stop showing up early to your appointments as a quick side note. Like if I tell you it's at noon, I feel like tattooing is the only industry like this. Like don't be early. Don't be late. Like be there right at noon. Cause like, I don't like the feeling of like my client comes in and like you see me doing stuff and you're like, Oh, like I'm here 10 minutes early and ready to go. And it's like, I I'm came not. in like a half hour early set up for you. And now I'm like ordering needles or like whatever it is I needed to do, like right. that I scheduled into my day to do now. Yeah. So if, if the appointment's <laughs> at noon, what's like the perfect time for the client to be Come there? At noon. Come at noon. <laughs> noon o'clock. <laughs> it's at noon. It's at noon. Like, I feel like if I wanted you to come at 1145, I would have let you know. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Hey, yeah. Come early to do paperwork. Like I would let you know, like, no, no, come at noon. Paperwork takes like all of five minutes and like, I've already planned into your appointment extra time if we need to like redraw something or change right. an area of the tattoo. And it's like, that's so much rarer than I think clients think it is, which is always fascinating to me. I have one client that shows up two or three hours early because he has like anxiety about being late. Mm -hmm. And I've told him he doesn't have to do that. And he was like, I know, but that's how I like to do it. But he, he'll sit in his car so I do until that. one o'clock. I do that when <laughs> so I. So I'm like, it. that's <laughs> fine. Like you could be there the day before sitting in your car. <laughs> that's you know? my jam. When I get tattooed, like if you're gonna tattoo me at noon, like yeah. I'm in the neighborhood at like eleven thirty. Like just I found, circling the no, block. No, like I found a coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, nearby, you want to get some food? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like I'm hanging out and like waiting so yeah. I can be here. Yeah, that right sucks. On time. Like rushing to an appointment to be put in pain. I think. These things especially, because you talked about, you know, having so many, uh, and like having so many people that want to book with you that you can't even take all of it. So this like overflow of clients. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that only comes, like you can only build that clientele if like you're treating the clients well in all these aspects and like yeah. being on time, like being conscious of what they want, giving them the experience, having like good bedside manner, if you want to call it good before and after follow-up communication. Like, those are the keys to, like, building clientele. On yeah. on top of the artwork, you know, obviously. But I've even seen artists that aren't really that advanced in their artwork booked out forever because they have all the other parts down. Yeah, you know? like, people want to spend... And I think that, like, you know... I mean, I guess if, you, if you're a tattooer that doesn't collect t tattoos, this would maybe be a reason to not be that person. But, like... Uh, having tattoos, collecting tattoos like yourself as an artist and like going through that experience and being on the other side of it and like not just getting tattooed by your friends, like getting tattooed by people you really admire. Yeah. Like I feel like that's so helpful, not only just because like 
you get to then, first of all, you get to like spend time with people that you admire and talk to them about tattooing, right. which is like the greatest part of getting right. tattooed for me. Um, but like, yeah, being on the other side of it and being like seeing how other tattooers treat their clients, being that client yeah. and then being like, oh, I didn't like this. So don't do it to other fucking people. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. having, and especially too, like, cause like I, again, like I've had tattoos where like, I didn't love my experience with that tattooer and like the, the work is beautiful. But when people are like, oh, who did that? I'm just like, mm, you know, some guy. Yeah. Just, I don't remember, you know, cause like I actually, I don't want to refer you to them because I'm yeah. like, you don't want to give them the bad experience. Yeah. I had a bad, you know, or like being upfront about that. Like I've had like, you know, on clients and like asked them about work that was beautiful. And they were like, Oh yeah, like, you know, so and so did it, but like I would never get tattooed by them again. You right. know, like I feel like you you learn a lot about yourself as a tattooer when you really think about like how many repeat clients do I have? You know what I mean? Like I hate using the term client retention because that's not really what it's about, but like um like my clients that come back to me over and over again, I'm like it's cuz you enjoy the art, but like you look forward to the time we spend together. Yeah. You know? And like that's so fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, my fucking regular clients I'm really excited to see, <laughs> and half the shop usually is too, and it's and that's fun. Yeah, because I don't really have a social life. That's my social life is my good client, yeah. <laughs> you know. And then working is like my bad clients, yeah. <laughs> you know. And like we, we talked, I think we talked about the other day, like clients who like bring like um, gifts or like tips, like other yeah. kind of tips and stuff, like like clients that bake for me and stuff. Like that's the sweetest thing in the whole yeah. world. But I had a client a couple months ago who was like. Um, like her and I talk about D and D a lot because uh, I played a ton in like right. high school and stuff. I don't really played sons because Dunkin' Donuts. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I love Dunkin' Donuts. Um, but like uh, her and I always talk about like what campaigns she has going on and yeah. stuff. And like at the end of her appointment, she's like, "Hey, like I don't know if it's like really overstepping or anything like that." But she was like, "You know, if we ever had like a like a one shot campaign, like." could I email you about it? Like, would you want to be part of it? And like, I loved everything about that interaction. Like her, like, first of all, the fact that she's like asking me if I want to be in a D and D campaign, but like the way she went about it, where she's like recognizing, like there's like, there's kind of a power imbalance between clients and, and tattooers. Right. And her being like, I don't know if this is like overstepping to like right. ask you to hang out. But, like I had a, a client before who like knows I'm a really big Bulls fan and I've tattooed him for years. I've done both of his sleeves. Like, we're fucking cool. Like, I look forward to seeing him. He's yeah. one of my favorite clients. He's a super rad dude. I actually had a client uh, who became a really rock solid client um, who was referred to me through him, like, over Tinder. She was like, who did your tattoos? <laughs> and then this chick started getting tattooed by me, which is, like, my favorite way anyone's ever found nice, me. Nice, <laughs> yeah. Um, Take notes, Cam. Right? <laughs> but, like, yeah, like, his team was coming into town to play the Bulls, and he was like, hey, is it, like, as a tip, if I get tickets, like, do you want to go to the game? You know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, like, yeah. you're awesome. And we've spent, like, so much time together. That is cool. You know? Yeah. That is cool. I, I love that. I love when clients are inviting you out. Because, mm-hmm. like, what a compliment it is. Right. Yeah. And then to have, you know, not only a good time, because I've, I've had times like that where it builds a friendship. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and I think it's tough, right? Because you can't hang out with anyone, everyone. And like sometimes it grows organically and it's mm-hmm. it's really nice. I've also had like clients that maybe are in similar situations where they it's, it sounded like your client was maybe a little nervous to, yeah. to ask you this like where I've had that and they're like oh or I don't know maybe like you're just being nice to me because of like the experience right almost like I'm a fucking stripper or something yeah. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> you're just a robot yeah. they're just paying yeah. you sorry yeah like I know you're just being nice to me because we're yeah. at work or whatever. Yeah. don't really like their clients yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or whatever but because I'm going through that now with with a new friend actually that was a client and had an you know, after he finished the sleeve, invited me to go out and do stuff. And, like, I'm having a blast, and it's so cool. Right. You know? Yeah. And it's, but like you said, 100%, something that grows organically. But, like, yeah, my like, right now, my friend that's watching my cat is somebody that, like, started out as a as a client. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I go to basketball games with her probably, like, every month now. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? But there's kind of a blurry line of, like, if it's appropriate. Because it's not always appropriate. No. And, th- I mean, the, like, people I'm thinking about 
it's like I've tattooed them for like a really long time and like right. really big pieces. This isn't like somebody came in and got like a, like one, a, off. a one hour tattoo and then was like, hey man, you want to grab dinner? And it's like, right. no, I really don't know you. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. like I do. I have like clients that I've seen for years and I know them and I like know what's up in their lives and about their kids and their shitty exes and like yeah. in like a in a very real way and it's like so cool when that happens because you're right it doesn't it often doesn't like that's pretty special right but yeah when you're doing a sleeve a back piece anything like that like cool I'm, we're spending 40 50 hours together if not more it's like all right by the end of that i kind of know who you are mm-hmm. hopefully yeah you know? ideally not always no yeah <laughs> you have those quiet clients i respect sometimes. that though you <laughs> you're know worried I mean? about the quiet ones <laughs> quiet ones you gotta watch out for those ones yeah. <laughs> but like like i love like clients who come in and they're like hey do you mind if i like i'm gonna put headphones in listen to this podcast or whatever it is that they want to do and i'm yeah. like yeah man this is your time yeah. like if you don't want to say a single word to me like fucking do that it's weird when it's the other way around yeah, it's nice to have, like, a client that, like, knows the deal. They're, like, I'll keep myself busy. We'll talk throughout. The, but there's, like, those some clients that, like, don't know the deal and, like, find it, kind of want to be entertained the whole time. I like the clients that think they know the deal, but they <laughs> fucking <Yeah>. don't. Because <laughs> they're just funny. They don't know shit. Yeah. Well, they're, like, those are the ones that are trying, though. Yeah. But it's, yeah. you know, it's, like, normal that, like, if we're, we're tattooing eight hours together, like... You know, there's very few people in my life that I can talk to eight hours straight, let sure. alone a stranger. We're you know what have I mean? Some like, quiet moments. yeah, conversations yeah. ebb and flow, and that's fine. Yeah. But like, when I said the other way around is weird to me, is I've never been tattooed by this person, and I don't know them personally. But uh, somebody told me once upon a time that there's a dude in the Chicago area where it's like, when you get tattooed by him, like I don't know if it's like his like after you book the appointment or like one of his like notes before you actually book with him, but like his assistant lets you know like he might not talk to you the entire tattoo session. And I'm just like, that is a really weird thing to feel like you need to preface to people. Yeah, it's kind of a red flag. Right? Like, yeah, I would be 100%. like, oh, I don't need to like get tattooed led- by yeah. you. <laughs> like, that seems really intense. It's different if, like, he began the began the session. Begin. Like, hey, begin. <laughs> begin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. <laughs> a little bit of rest. I'm, like, trying to be <laughs> so <laughs> appropriate right now. It's a little <laughs> earlier. It slips out sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, it's different if they begin, like, yeah, you know, I'm not a talkative person, you know, but, like, him straight up saying, like, yeah, I'm not going to talk to you this session, yeah. just heads up. It's just, I don't know, because I remember with, I had a client where it was, um, like, I had had a death in the family, and I was, like, back to tattooing that week, and, like, she came in, and I was just like, hey, like, this happened to me this week, if I'm really quiet today, like, that's why, it's not personal, you know yeah. what I mean? And, like, that's, like, a very different situation than just to be, like, known for I, not I don't talking know, that, to like, your clients. that, like, attitude of, like... Again, just like that you're somehow better than your client who's like the person that is helping provide your fucking lifestyle. Yeah. So you're saying like that artist has built a reputation for not talking right, to his clients. Like, yeah. And that's always like a weird thing too because it's I also know that there are like some clients in the world where it's like they kind of want that. Like the talking? No, no like, be like people left who alone. treat them badly. Like when yeah. I used uh, to yeah. when I used to bartend in college, I bartended at like a big uh, frat bar, like a Greek bar. And I was like the only like alt girl. <laughs> and like frat boys loved when I was mean to them I made yeah. so much money doing that like that is like I know that that's like a real thing and that that exists in tattooing as well where like some clients do kind of like to be treated like trash but I feel like that's a very small it's a very that's, yeah. that's small that's John's career. career you know <laughs> what I mean yeah. it's John's TikTok career now can you insult me well, we get yeah. emails that's like when you tattoo me can you be mean to me and yeah. I'm like oh I'll, I'll try <laughs> how, how does it feel to be uh, fetishized John I don't care. I've been used and abused my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> just let me know. What you want. I'm just re-saying the shit people told me all my life. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Whatever. I'm not gonna go there. Because um, I've also had clients that, like, beforehand, and it was there's like one girl I'm thinking of specifically, and it was adorable. Honestly, she just let me know that she was really happy to get tattooed. But she's really socially awkward. She didn't want to say anything stupid, so mm-hmm. she's gonna be quiet the whole time. Oh, <laughs> that's like heartbreaking. I know, I know. You're like, no, I promise. Like, I, I promise you, you won't say anything stupider than my coworker said or to me can. five yeah, minutes yeah, yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I, I tried to respect it because she was almost like shaking when she said mm-hmm. it, and so I like, I was quiet for the first couple hours. But there's always like the shop banter, which is kind of like warms the client up mm-hmm. i that's like one of my like i fucking love tattoo shops i was talking about yeah. this with somebody the other day who's um who i was at a tattoo convention and they work as a counter person 
okay. for fun. They're like independently wealthy. Like cool. they have like some fucking they're just like bored. good money yeah. they make online and they're just like, Yeah, man, I just like I liked like tattooers are my people. Yeah. You know, and they're like, I just I like being a counter person. Like yeah. I like being at a tattoo shop. They have no desire to learn how to tattoo. Awesome. Best counter person yeah. ever. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I loved talking to them because like everything that like I'm hype about about tattooing, like it was the same vibe. They were just right. like they love the culture, the lifestyle, like the art form. It's just like so sick. But I was you can like, kind of can you come to Chicago and <laughs> be my assistant. Like, <laughs> but you can kind of like get a gauge on the client based on how they're responding to the shop banter. Like, and with this girl, like we were being pretty inappropriate that day, and I would see these little giggles from her body shaking, and like I was like, cool, like she likes this, like she's laughing, you yeah. know, like no one's talking to her, she thinks it's funny. So after a couple of hours of that, like I did start talking to her. And there was, you know, this slight awkwardness. Um, but I was like... So you do like dick jokes. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> do you hear what these guys are saying? Like, you think I'm going to judge whatever is going to come out yeah. of your mouth? Right. You know? yeah, it yeah. almost loosens them up a bit. They're yeah, like, oh, bro. they're saying way worse shit. Especially when I we might. start offering Cam money to leave his girlfriend. And, you know, <laughs> I don't know if the same rules apply when Chuck's here, but... Yeah. Well, because he's usually the one warming yeah. up yeah. the rest of the show. We're shop. like, we're warning our other clients about him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, just to let you know, him. he's here once a month, and it's <laughs> probably like the rowdiest day of that month. Yeah, we'll make sure to schedule you when Chuck's not here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like you die laughing or leave very upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if like John's got Chuck up here and I have like a sensitive client, I'm like, oh, I'm tattooing in the back today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck will walk to the back. So this is a pussy, huh? Yeah, <laughs> Yo, walk to the back as John's taking pictures and like, hold on, hang on, second dick. Yeah, hike his shorts all the way up. Yeah, walk. he'll walk to the back like fucking. You fucking or what? Yeah, literally. <laughs> like staring at my client. And he's like, oh, I was talking to Kim. <laughs> so Kim, you're in like the early stages of building the clientele, right? Yeah. I know we've gone over how important it is to treat your clientele. Um, kind of opposite to what we like do skits and shit about. Yeah. But how have you noticed the, not only that effect on your clients, but like, have you seen how important that is? Yeah. hundred percent. Um, I'd say I do t like lo me and Logan were actually talking about this the other day. I tapped, like I've noticed recently, like a lot of my clientele has been like super young. Yeah. Like I haven't tattooed anyone over like 25. Kind of like, delicate, month. right? Yeah, I do tattoo like a lot of females too, or even just like I've young my young generation sensitive like in right. general. It's very rare you find. Which like, I don't think is a bad thing. I just noticed oh. you got tattooing in the back a lot. Yeah, yeah. I do tattoo some sensitive people. <laughs> come on, come on, okay. <laughs> also, it's like a yeah, lot of new. It's all a new clientele. Like some maybe like, even people new to the in whole industry. Yeah, like hundred percent. Like I had my client Spencer the other day that yeah. I tattooed up here. Like that was like my third time tattooing him. I got a feel for him. He's cool. He yeah. was like. Maybe a little, like, shy and sensitive at first, but after a couple of sessions, like, I was like, oh, this kid's got some humor, so he's cool, you know? But it is, like, a lot of younger people, and I do have to, like, kind of walk on eggshells with them. Because I feel like young people are super quick to, like, jump jump the wagon, you know? Like, there's... Cancel culture. Yeah, they don't have, like... My generation has, like, no sense of loyalty, almost. Hmm. As if, like, some... Well, maybe, that's like... That's a powerful statement. <laughs> no, 100%, <laughs> because, I mean, I even find myself, like, having those problems sometimes, you know? So. Loyalty to what? Maybe not just loyalty, but just, like, sticking to one thing. Like, I feel like it's super easy for my generation to, like, have, like, one bad experience and be like, oh, fuck this. I'm just go somewhere else. Go to another artist, okay. you know? Um, As opposed to what, like, talking about maybe, it, dealing yeah, with it. Yeah, like, 100%. Like, honestly, like, yeah. if I ever, like, do something that makes a client uncomfortable, like, I, you know, I try to make it very clear from, like, the moment that they come in that it's, like, you can tell me whatever's yeah. going on, however you're feeling. Because it's, like, when I have clients who talk about, like, they felt like they couldn't say anything to their tattoo or like yeah. anything about the experience made them uncomfortable and they felt like they couldn't say anything. Yeah. It's just like to feel like trapped like that by somebody that you are giving like so much trust and so much power to is so fucking shitty. So kind of like yeah. what we were talking about earlier with like, you know, like if somebody wants to make a change to my design, like I feel rock solid about my art. Like I'm fucking, I like my own art. I'm good at this. You know what I mean? I like in a, in a, a like, yeah, in like a genuine <laughs> way. Like yeah. I like what I do. Otherwise I wouldn't do it. But, like, if you're like, hey, this isn't what I want on my body forever, like, that's an entirely different conversation. That has nothing to do with whether or not the art is good. So is, 
Tell me about a time that you made a client super uncomfortable. Can you think of one? Oh. Where you had to, like, correct it. Yeah, actually, I can think of one. Um, I was talking with a client who has, like, um, like I would say she has, like, a, a medium complexion. And we were yeah. talking about, we were doing black and gray tattoo, and she was talking about one in color, right? And, like, I was looking at her skin tone, and I, I used the phrase, like, oh, no, like, I was, like, I, whoever told you you can't get color, like, is just fucking lazy. I was, like, you're pretty light skin. And then there was, like, this big fucking, like, dead silent air. And I was just, like, oh, sh-. like, I'm really came sorry. Like, I did yeah. not. I was, like, you know what I mean? Because I do yeah. know that, like, that that particular phrasing is not okay with some people, right? And I was just, like, that was just, like, a poor choice of words. I was, like, what I meant to say is that, like, your complexion can support like a wide range of color. Like whoever yeah. told you that you couldn't, you know what I mean? And Did like you I, see I, I backtrack like, for them to get yeah, like visibly. Her, her like and her friend like both got really quiet. Like I, you know, I'm tattooing her. I like felt her body tighten up, and I just immediately was just like, you know, like I'm, I am really sorry. Like that was a poor choice of words, you know. And like I have never used the phrase light skin sense. You yeah. know what I mean? But like, but it's good to give your client that clarity. Yeah, like, yeah. and I really didn't mean anything by it. That can be a, a sensitive topic. 100%. Sometimes it's it's tough to talk about, you know? Because, yeah. like, and it kind of goes back to what you're saying about, like, tattooers being jaded or just, like, used to, like, when you're referring to this, this is a special day, but, like, this is every day for us. Sometimes it can be so much about the design and, like, the canvas. I'll forget that I'm talking to a human sometimes because mm-hmm. I'm so worried about everything after the human part i was just gonna say that like it's almost like we don't see it as like other people see it yeah. it's like i don't see you as like a spanish person a black person a white person i see you as like like you're saying like whatever tone your skin is it's like i'm not like a piece you're of not your piece of artwork you're a piece That's of paper you know it's like whoa cam no <laughs> I'm just kidding. it's I'm like just, so, I'm just maybe you have like a darker piece right. of paper it's that but i see you as that you're just a canvas like yeah. it doesn't change how i feel about you it changes just how i approach the tattoo and, like, I feel like that's part of being good artist is, like, being honest with your clients like that and letting them know what you well, can and can't do. And, like, the other side of that, too, though, with being honest is, like, just because I don't know how to achieve the result my client is looking for doesn't mean somebody else does. 100%. And I feel like I encounter that a lot where it's, like, clients have been told, like, you can't have this, this won't work on you, whatever. And it's just, like, it's just not true. Like, I, I as somebody that does, like, a lot of, like, kind of, like, finer line dot work, illustrative kind of stuff like I've had a lot of clients like email me and been been like hey like I, I've been told that I can't get this art style on me and it's like no it's not true at all like yeah. uh, the actual technical application side of like what I'm doing is actually going to be changed a little bit but like the end result is going to look the way you want it to look yeah. and like that's all that matters and yeah. like uh, you know people have like asked me to, you know I don't do a lot of color full stop it's just not something I enjoy yeah so it's like you know, when people ask me stuff about color I'm just like honestly I don't really, like, I'm not an expert on this. Mm-hmm. Like, ask somebody who does a lot of color work. Because, like, I can give you my best guess, but, right. like, that's not actually that helpful. And I don't want to make any definitive statements that are untrue. So it's like, if I don't know how to do something, like, they just say that. You don't have to be an expert on everything. But that's the best advice you could give is, like, hey, I don't know. Here's someone that does. Yeah. yeah. Here's, like, a direct referral. Ask them. But, yeah, oftentimes, like... I feel like it is my responsibility to communicate some of this stuff with clients, you know, like whether it's about skin tone or like showing, you know, a piece that they found on Instagram, you know, on some crazy Has pale. Anybody ever shown you a very obviously photoshopped reference? Because that that's my too. favorite. When yeah. I'm like, no, no, this isn't. This isn't real. real. This is yeah. not a real. I want tattoo. it to glow <laughs> like that. It's like, well, <laughs> you can't. But it's like, you know, if. My grandma comes in to get tattooed who has 80 year old skin and mm-hmm. she shows me a 20 you know year old Irish girl with a tattoo with super pale I'm like it's just not it's just not yeah and yeah. I have to like let people know that sometimes or sometimes with, like rib tattoos and like the picture is like this dude who has six percent body fat versus someone who has like 30 percent body fat it's like there's gonna be these differences. You know, and I've even experienced that, like, working out at the gym, like, with a trainer. I'm like, I want to look like that. And my trainer is like, that's not your body type. You'll never look like that. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. And, and that's just, just like, what it oh, is I sometimes. I see this person yeah. here every single day for the last five years. Are you going to do that? And it's like, no. Right. Yeah. Or, or, or whatever <laughs> it is. He's like twice some, a day. <laughs> and, it, you know, it might be like, okay, you know, back in reference to the training, like, John, like, you're never going to look like that because you don't have that body style. But we can still get, like, 
a body similar. style you like. Yeah, or right. Or that you're happy with. Yeah, yeah. You know? Right. And like, and these like are what just is it about that person's aesthetic that you like? Because that's achievable. Right. Yeah. Right. Or what do you, what is it about this person's tattoo that you like? And maybe we could put it in a better place to get closer to that end result. Yeah. Or change the design or bump up the contrast. Or like, and these are the options that we have. And hopefully we know as tattooers to help get around or improve certain situations. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, like, like I feel like that's really what, big with, like, <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine you at the gym and you're like, I want that guy's body. Yeah, and she's like, he is six seven. First, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is fucking Greek, and you will never look like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to work down but, uh, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of leg lifts do I need to do to grow six right. inches? <laughs> You also need to change. You head. need to change your lineage, bloodline, and all of that if you want to look like that. No, bro. I'll <laughs> talk specifically about that example if you want. Though it had to do with my biceps, actually, and I have really high biceps, so it's like I will never achieve this bottom peak. Whatever. Oh, this like is people boring. That have, like, you the short, people that have like the short biceps and stuff like. If that. If you have short biceps and you like, you know, flex, you'll have this ball here, you know. And then the alternative of having a higher bicep is you can get, you know, a bigger shoulder. But I didn't really want bigger shoulders. And then I cried. <laughs> <laughs> At the gym or later, like right, right in that moment, I'm just trying to figure out the, where he's you were crying, crying while like on the while, floor, while you're he's crying. like he's curling, looking at the dude next to him, just like tears coming tear. down. Yeah. My eyes are sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> my forehead started to lean into my trainer <laughs> as I as I cried. Yeah, I just picture your trainer she, with her accent too, just be like, "You never look like that." Oh, yeah. oh baby. Oh baby, oh, baby. I'm baby. sorry. <laughs> Oh, baby, me and more. It's real world. <laughs> now Lily's the shit. Lily's like, you want to look like this? Yeah. <laughs> she literally has the That's perfect what I'm saying. body She probably has the best building. body in yeah, there. Bro. So she's like, and she's she's like, like very like naturally like tan, so she has like the shadow <laughs> yeah. definition. You know? she's got, she looks like she looks the cut. dudes that are just freshly painted, but she's yeah. like that 24-7, yeah, bro. And then the, now that we're comfortable, she always complains to me about her body. <laughs> yeah, bro, it's fucking great. She whatever. tells you what she wishes she could improve. Yeah, and I'm over here like <laughs> trying to get half of what you have, you know? I need to tell you about Allegory's new Ultra Black. This stuff is dark, maybe even darker than my childhood. It is amazing for lining, shading, and even blackouts. And I know a thing or two about blacking out. You got to check this stuff out on AllegoryInc.com. Use discount code UNEMPLOYABLE for 20% off. Again, go to AllegoryInc.com, check out their new Ultra Black, and use discount code UNEMPLOYABLE for 20% off. Have you had a situation where you, where a client wanted something that you knew would look bad and you had to figure out how to steer them? Yeah, hundred percent. And then I've been in like the same situations as Andy where it's like, they want something I'm just not versed in. And I, at the end of the day, just want everyone to have the best tattoo that they can get. And I have no problem. Like, you know, could you like explain <sighs> rather than just repeat what we already said? Yeah. Um, I need a minute to think of an example. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, for me, it's a little harder to make like changes on the spot. I'm still like dealing with stuff yeah. like that. I'm not the quickest uh, at drawing or creating. So sometimes I'll like definitely like client doesn't like something. I get like instant anxiety. I start freaking out a little yeah, bit. You, you know? have to be change on the spot. hundred percent. I'm not the best at doing that. So but maybe like, the situation was a client wanting to change the design. Yeah, but I'm also really patient. So I'll, like, take that time and, like, I'm okay. Like, I don't like when my client's hovering over me while I'm drawing. But, like, I'm okay and I'm willing to, like, sit there with my client and, like, you know, tweak it to... They're, like, watching they like you. It. They're, like, what are you going to change? You're, like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yet. Give me some time. I I'm just... That's hard in the beginning, like, when you have to learn to adapt. Yeah. Like, uh, you talked about it, like, loving your art, and then, like, we got to change. I'm decent at it, but I used to be really fucking bad at it. But yeah. that's, like, a like an ego thing, which is, like, yeah. a huge fucking issue in tattooing. Yeah. Man, nobody yeah. has bigger egos than tattooers. But, yeah. like... No, I have what? no problem. Nobody has bigger egos than tattooers. No, I know. <laughs> I was trying to think if I could think of someone. Oh, if you could think of someone that yeah. was magicians, a tattooer. Yeah. Athletes. <laughs> yeah, those fucking magicians. Yeah, probably. man, they'll get you. They think they're just fucking magic. God, <laughs> I know your tricks. But, like, yeah, being able to, like, 
separate your own art from yourself, which I feel like as a tattoo where, I mean, it's like the amount of like, like we talked about, like regular clients are awesome, but like how often do you like do a tattoo and then never see it again? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like being able to separate yourself from your art needs to, I feel like be a bigger part of tattooing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, realizing that the, that person has to wake up and look at that tattoo yeah. every day, like which is also fucking crazy. I, yeah. I'm sorry to like go back to this, no, but like people walking in and being like, "Hello, I'd like to carry your art on my body every day till I die." That's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's so sick. It's like the I had like one of those realizations a couple months ago. Where I was like, "Damn, I'm actually like doing this to people. This is kind of sick." Yeah, like, and then as you like, like, I have like boys that I've known since I was like 10 years old, and I'm like, "Holy shit!" Like these dudes will have my tattoos when they're dead. Like. Yeah, it's and insane. as you, like, progress in your career yeah. and get the opportunities to do larger works, and you're, like, are really starting to change what people look yeah. like. like, you move from doing, like, these small little tattoos to, like, actually changing how people look. Yeah, know? and how, like, the world perceives, perceives them and them. interacts with them. Like, whether or not people... I don't know why it's this new thing where people like to pretend that, like, people don't treat you differently when you're tattooed. But oh, yeah, no, they you do. absolutely are treated yeah. differently yeah. when you're mm -hmm. a visibly tattooed person. Yeah. yeah, so they're taking that on, you know, or almost, like, in spite getting it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it's super cool. It's, like, a huge honor, again. Like, yeah. it's just yeah. always coming back to, like, just having so much gratitude for clients. Yeah, and it's definitely important to to have that in the forefront and stay reminded of that. And, like, like you said, being grateful. Sometimes I'll get so caught up in, like, this tattoo I'm doing has to be just as good as the one I did yesterday, hopefully better ideally better i want right. every tattoo i do to be yeah and sometimes that pressure tattooed. will affect me how i treat my clients 100 you know? i think it's very odd that um because you're kind of talking about it earlier like when you wanted to get into tattooing that like oh it seems like this fun like goofy good time job mm -hmm. and like it's a lot more. about it is but like the the like i feel like common conception that it's not like people don't think of tattooing as like a high pressure job no yeah. which blows which, my mind yeah which like you i feel like like Throughout your apprenticeship, you're like, oh, this is sick. I'm about to start, start tattooing. And, like, you get to the tattoo part, and you're like, I could fuck this person up for the yeah. rest of their life. And, like, that's a lot of pressure. I feel like you feel it more in the beginning. 100%. Do you still feel that? Do you, Are you like, oh, my God, I could fuck them up forever? I mean, I guess that's not, at like, the front of my mind. But, like, yeah. I do, like, Depending I, on the I think piece, as you maybe? get further into your career and people have an idea of what your work looks like, you, like, there's now a standard you're expected to deliver on. Right. Nobody wants your second best tattoo. Right. Nobody wants your second best tattoo. Yo, because yeah. I'll get in my head and I'll, like, when they start deviating too much from the original design. Mm -hmm. And, like I said, I've gotten better at it and I can hide it. But I used to be like, hey, how are you doing? Here's the design. What do you think? Yeah. And they'd be like... I want to change something, and I'd be like, "Yeah, and you can like see what? it. You can see it in their face you know? before they say it too." I was thinking like more like feminine, and I'll be like, "What do you mean? <laughs> like what? Give me an example." That guy yeah. you had the other yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so catch me up. And then, <laughs> oh, no, wait, what about this guy the other week? Catch they me up, just bro. fucking <laughs> did. I've talked about this guy so much, and I still <laughs> tattoo him. So. Okay. And he watches the podcast. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she does. <laughs> like, um. No, just someone went, they completely changed every aspect of the design to things that I don't ever do. I actually made a video about it just recently. So I actually kind of had that with a client the other week where this project started out with us agreeing on, like, I'll do... Uh, very light color fusion, which my version of color fusion is like it's a black and gray tattoo with like one accent color, like a couple places like blue in the eyes. tattoo. Not blue eyes. We're not putting <laughs> blue eyes on tigers. Um, we're just not. What about green? <laughs> I mean, that's but, more accurate. Yeah. Um, You'll be red. But like, you know, like, I, like, you know, doing like a, I do a lot of like goddesses and lady heads and like, oh yeah, there's like, you know, red flowers and red in the jewelry. There's like, you know, accent like that. So we had talked about doing like color fusion on this piece. And then when they came back, um, to like finish getting it done they were like talking about like oh like I wanted to do full color and I just like full stopped and was like you know like we actually had a consultation for this piece because it was like kind of in depth which I don't do a lot of in-person consultations personally just because I don't think it's really necessary but it's like you know we had talked when you came in about doing color fusion like I was just like I I do not do full color tattoos I was like so we can either like kind of proceed on the direction we already continued with or I was like if you want to just stop stop now like I was like I will send you the design and you can get it finished by somebody else who does yeah. full color like I'm I'm willing to go that far because like I really want it to be good for both of us yeah. you know you especially when it's happy. like we had already 
Because if it, if it had been at the consultation, I want full color, and that's what I want to do, and I don't want to do anything else, I'd be like, let me offer some other tattooers in Chicago to check out. Yeah. Because that is not what I do. Dude, I had someone in the chair stencil on go, we're doing color, right? You ever had anybody change their mind once you've already started tattooing? The, the yep. same person. We, same person we were just talking about. Oh man, my like heart dropped. That happened I, to me I last doing week. This forearm tattoo, and like like halfway, like two hours in, this chick was like, "Hey," and I was, you know, the way people say "Hey," where you're just like, "Oh my!" Like, so just I was my thinking, right. <laughs> right. and it was like really lucky. I think it was like this was like when I first started tattooing, but I think it was like florals and filigree. Or, like, florals and, like, a mandala. And, like, she, like, didn't want the mandala anymore and just wanted more filigree. And we had, thankfully, just been tattooing, like, bottom up. And so I was just, like, cool. Like, we'll come up to this part and then we'll wipe off the stencil. And, like, we, so it was, like, it was a situation where it was okay. It's still difficult. Yeah. But it, like. You change your whole thought process. It's like just, tattoo. bro, it's so scary. Because you're just, like, are you about to say something that I can't change? Like, Dude, the tattooing worst experience is like, I of my life. take things away. Yeah, the worst experience of my life have started with, hey, can I talk to you about something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I was wondering. So, Across the board, not just tattooing. Yeah, yeah correct. <laughs> Why is all my family here? Yeah. <laughs> not a, yeah. I, I can't even. I, I, don't even think I, can, I don't think I can talk about the experiences. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, it's, it's. Like, yeah, the. Whatever, the client changed everything. And, and but back to what I was saying, I'm guilty of like. I know you're going to leave with this tattoo and like my name's on it. And, like, what other people are going to think? You mm -hmm. know, like, oh, you said, like, I got tattooed by this artist. That's weird. This looks nothing like their art. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or, like, and then I'll get it in my head. They're going to be like, oh, like, you paid all this money for this fucking tattoo? Yeah. Right. Because I was thinking about that the last couple of weeks is, like, what the client wants versus what I think the best design is. And, like where that happy medium is or like where you really should put the focus mm -hmm. because in this situation I'm talking about all the focus went to what the client wants. Yeah. And I hated the tattoo, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of wish my name wasn't attached to it. However, the client was stoked about it and loved it. Right. And I was like, is, is that the right way to do it though? Like they're happy. I mean, they paid for a service. I was miserable the whole fucking day. And I almost quit tattooing over it. Right, but it also <laughs> sounds like, I mean, the tattoo you did was not the tattoo you agreed upon. Correct. You know, and I've had that happen before. I think I can think of one time that happened. Yeah. But she came in and, like, I showed her the design and she was like, hey, actually, I was thinking we could do this, like, other, like a floral or something. Right. Like, nothing that was, like, wildly out of bounds, but, I like, I just, I, like, the way, how quickly it happened, I was like, yeah. so it sounds like you already knew this before you came in. Was like, give me a day I was up like, I was like, so I'll go redraw it right now, but I was like, we're not counting your deposit towards this. I mean, I was yeah. like, very clearly you had thought about this well before you came in and you were like, fine with like <clears throat> me spending time working on something for you that you already knew you weren't going to get. Yeah. And yeah. she like was totally understanding of it. She was like, yeah, you're right. Like I should have said something, you know? And like, I have that, like when I send like, um, you know, when people are booking with me, I have like a little like FAQ thing that mm. goes along with like the deposit info. And like personally in my FAQ, it's like, you know, if you, if you want something drastically different than what we agreed to at the booking, like, please tell me as soon as possible in case I'm not the right artist for the project. Yeah. Like, I understand, like, you know, maybe what you want changes or, like, your idea develops or whatever. Like, that's, you know, that's normal and that happens. But, like, tell me when that happens because there's no way that happened as you walked through the door. Right. Well, listen, I need some advice from you, I Andy. I don't want this. Okay. No, no, no. It'll be good. Yeah. So I have this person coming back. Okay. Let's so when this. I first had the consultation, they told me the idea, and I said, I'm not the artist for you. Mm -hmm. They begged. They really wanted to work yeah. with you. So I was like, okay, but the only way I'll do it is, like, I have freedom. Because, like, you want these things I don't typically do. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'll create my version of that, but no changes. Yeah. Obviously, they, every change, they almost did everything we've ever made a video about. Mm -hmm. It went so it would bad. Be so kind of incredible if they did that as a bit on purpose. I would respect them then. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I don't think they did it on purpose. No, no, no they didn't. So <laughs> it, it went so bad so fast. Ten minutes into them being here, I started giving them the whatever you want. I like I just fucking mm -hmm. collapsed. You got like, yeah, caught up in yeah. it. 
Yeah, because that's really it is it's it's really uncomfortable to kind of yeah. like hold your boundaries. Yeah, as a as an artist, yeah. especially because like yeah, you we're want talking her, about you want like her name right in the middle of the face. I got you. I think that looks sick. Right. You know, <laughs> like just I abandon everything I think I've ever known. Now I have them coming back still to okay. do more object or pe- like a tattoo of things that I normally don't tattoo. I have more sessions with this person. Right. How do you think I should handle it? And it's not like a in progress situation. Like this is like you're adding another piece. Yeah. yeah. How would I handle it? So I it'll be the whole session over again. Right. I mean, I think knowing that they're coming in, I would, I mean, it's, I'm not saying it's not hard and I'm not yeah, saying yeah. it's not like uncomfortable at times, but I think like coming in, like just reminding them of the conversation that you had before about it, that like, this is not, you know, work I normally do. And like, we agreed that like, if we were going to go down this route, you were like comfortable with me doing it the way that I thought would be best. And you know, if they come in and like you have something and it's, that's not what they want. I just, circling back kind of like the the full color thing just like circling back to like hey you know we had actually talked about this before and like you know if it's not the like I want you to have a tattoo that you're happy with like when I talked to that client where I was like hey like we talked about this I don't do full color like I was really stressed out because I was like I don't want you to now have this like half finished tattoo for me that you're disappointed in like I really don't want that for either of us Mm -hmm. right but like I also don't want to do a full color tattoo that I know I'm not going to enjoy the process of like, I just don't really enjoy doing color personally. Yeah. Um, these people are fucking way better at it than me who get joy out of doing it. You know, like I think that's something too with like styles and stuff. Like I've, I've forayed into realism once or twice before and it's like <laughs> not enjoyable to me. I don't like looking yeah. back and forth between my reference and the tattoo all day, you know, Yeah, but <coughs> it hurts I guess, back. <laughs> right. Yeah. But like, I guess circling back to this client, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a really uncomfortable conversation. Yeah, I figured 100%. my options were abandon them completely. Um, give them exactly what they want. Like, know that they're just this person. Mm-hmm. Come in, like, ready for that. Um, maybe even, like, hey, come in an hour early. We'll design it together. Because mm-hmm. that's what it was, sitting over my shoulder all day. Oh, move that there. Do that, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm just thinking of suicide. Last option is... I know, but that's also, like, the layout of your shop. You can't really get away from your clients. I know. I have to go in the like, bathroom. Like, <laughs> shops need a, an, a client-free area. I'm a I big know. believer in that. You need an artist space that's just for artists. And it's not because I don't like my clients and I don't want to be around you. But also, like, if I'm working on a drawing, like I'm going to try a couple different things yeah, before yeah. I'm, like... Like, I'm going to work through a bunch of options before I bring you what I think is the best one. So, like, you actually sitting and watching me do it is not helpful. Right, yeah, like sometimes process. our creative process is very messy and it could throw clients off. Yeah, but also like I, I like to try multiple things. I'm a big believer that like your first idea is not your best idea. It's like a big part of the reason I don't like doing freehand stuff. Like I get emails for like people who want drawn on florals and I'm like, why? Yeah. You <laughs> know, like is there like what is your reasoning that like this is something you really want? Uh, and usually people don't really have a good reason for it other than they think it would be like a cool experience. My artist like, drew this straight on me. Yeah, yeah he freestyled which 100% it. <laughs> is definitely works for some people. But like, I'm like, no, no, I would rather like draw it, look at it, spend time. With, like if I draw on you and then tattoo you, like we're just going with whatever I drew on you. Right. Like Either I want to no draw reference. it yeah. and like leave it alone. Maybe do some thumbnail sketches. Like I really want to spend time on my designs. It's just like how I like to work. But anyways, back to your client. So I should abandon him completely. <laughs> but like, yeah. I think you should have a, an honest conversation about it because it yeah. sounds like you guys I, I already tried. talked about it yeah. before. I mean, because I've I been there too. Again. I had that happen with um, somebody had sent me these references where it was like a lady face in florals. And some of the designs, like it was like a half face where it was like partially covered with like florals and like, but not all of them were like that. So, she, and she didn't say anything about it. And she showed up and I had done like a full lady face, like kind of more surrounded by florals. And it was like, not what she wanted. So then I went and I like hustled to like redraw it. Cause like I can draw florals fast if I have to. And it was just this like big back and forth thing. And she just, she didn't like how I was drawing stuff. And she kept like kind of pulling up her references. And I was just like, well, like, but like my work doesn't look like that. Right. You know, and you, my understanding like you was you were like, here's up. some inspiration and like do it in your style. And like, you know, I kind of like left her with that for like 15, 20 minutes. And then yeah. I like came back and like legitimately she was like, like, are we ready? No, legitimately. She was like, you know, you're right. Like, <laughs> what do you learn? You're right. She was like, your work isn't what I'm looking for. And left? 
Yeah. Wow. That's, I guess, the best way it could have gone, right? Yeah. I mean, and she was fucking really fucking mad about it, but, like, she, at one point, did say, like, that was my fault. Like, like her. Yeah. She was yeah. like, yeah, your work isn't what I'm looking for. And then left. And she did leave. That's and she was upset when she left, which right. I get, because, like, you took like time off and, and all that. Like huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah, Keep that, I mean, that entire ex- interaction and situation, like, sucked and was really uncomfortable. Yeah. But I was not about to do a half sleeve in, like, an art style that, like, Right, because I was going to be miserable for, like, oh, eight hours. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not – there's a difference between, like, a small design change and then just doing something so out of my wheelhouse. And it's, like, I'm going to be unhappy. And then the, always the bigger thing to me is someone else can do this better. Yeah, and maybe probably fast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Someone else can do this better. They're going to enjoy it, which is going to make it a better experience for everybody involved. Yeah. Like, you can tell when your tattooer doesn't want to treat your tattoo. Yeah. I don't think tattooers have good poker faces. No. This guy couldn't. He thought I had a fucking great time. Yeah. I think I'm gonna put my headphones on that next time, which I never do. But and I know you might judge me for that, but I think that's that's it's understandable though. I at least understand because I, I I met them. Yeah. Yeah. I would probably. You also don't do that every single time. But you don't always tattoo in headphones, right? No. 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 But yo, going back to like what you said about that guy, that's like don't talk. To, like he's not gonna talk to you. Like. <laughs> there's there's some sessions where like I wish that could happen, you know. Have you ever come in and you're just like, yo, I'm not talkative today, yeah. like, or I don't feel good, or like whatever. Yeah, I tell people that. You're like, I don't feel good. Don't talk to me. I mean, I would never say it like that, <laughs> but I'd be like, hey, you know, I have some personal stuff going on, and like, I'm here yeah. and I'm down to tattoo, but like, if I'm a little quiet, it's just because I'm trying to really yeah. focus on the work today. Yeah. No, like I feel like it's my like I need to talk to the client. And most of the time, almost all the time, I enjoy it, yeah. you know. Sometimes it's like a fun little break from whatever bullshit I have going on in my life. Yeah. But if I'm doing like a calf or a back or like, I know we're not going to talk a lot, you know. Yeah, that it's just way too hard. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. 90% of it is like your client talking and then you either, it's like essentially like the smile and nod at a club, like yeah. at a bar, like when you can't really hear somebody, you're just like, yeah, man, totally. Yeah. But it's different. <laughs> like with the rotaries now, like you don't have the noise. Like back with the coils, like there wasn't as much talking. Like, oh, I know? can't hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So my mom just died. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy for you. Like, oh, Does everyone sick, at the man. shop Wait, use what? rotaries? <laughs> Pretty much, The whole yeah. shop uses rotaries. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the dudes who, like, came here that some, were using coils have, like, Cuban switched here. Do you, the, the people you apprentice, do you make them learn coils? No. Why? It's a good, it's a good ass question. Like I don't rifle? cursive <laughs> from like what you okay, from what so you like, told. Sorry, go no, ahead. No, 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 no. I'll keep my opinions. You go first. <laughs> from like how you like how I learned. I feel like you told me it was just like I feel like it's definitely easier to get a grasp of the tattooing part, right? Like when you just start off like that. So with Cam, we broke that broke it all down, put it together. Like he had that option, and he's like, "I want to use rotaries," yeah. you know. And I'm like, "Okay." And like for me, I'll never go back to a coil. And, like, I haven't for five years. So it's, like, because I treat it like sponsorship. Like, mm-hmm. if you're coming to me, it's because you want what I have. And I mm-hmm. don't tattoo with a coil. Mm-hmm. And the reality is, like, I haven't tattooed with a coil in a long time. Yeah. So I can teach you, like, the basics and stuff. But once you get to a certain level, like, I'm not really going to be able to teach you anything. You know, I can, like, send you here or, like, there or whatever. Like, go learn from this person but it's like, hey, I'm going to teach you exactly what I'm doing and the style I'm doing. Right. I might send you to different artists to learn different things. Like if you want color, yeah, go talk with Nate. If you do want to use other machines or whatever. But I'm, I can only teach you what I know. Right, or like absolutely. What, I, what I do. So I'm not going to waste time like explaining these things that like I don't even use. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to get really specific about it. Like we are going to learn how to use a pen rotary machine. We're going to learn how to do three RL shading and, and, and that, Mm -hmm. you know, like if Cam had asked me something about color blends or like that style packing or palette choices, I'm not even going to get it. Well, I know a little bit. Go to Nate. Right. Go talk yeah, to you him about like it. Bullshit me. You just be like, yeah, yeah bro. Because there's like, there's no point. Like, Especially what, when I'm it's going to act like when the information's in here. Yeah, and I've had a bunch of artists be like, oh, like you're like losing tradition. Like that's bullshit. That like you don't teach them that. And that's not what I'm saying. 
I'm just saying, like, I don't teach. I'm not saying they shouldn't learn. Mm -hmm. 100%. You know? Because you've never been like, no, you're not allowed to. Right. Like, right. if I had a question about coils or something, I'll go ask Scott, Phil, yeah, yeah. you know, Rob. Like, these are dudes who still use them. You right. Know? Like, so what I always find interesting is, like, meeting newer tattooers who have never used coils, but have strong opinions about why a pen style rotary machine is so much better. So yeah, I don't that have I have, opinions. that is what I take issue yeah. with is I'm like, but you've never actually, you've never tried it. Like you don't know how it would change the way yeah. you tattoo. Right. I think it's essential to, because the rotaries are like very like specific. And I think if you know the rotary you're going to use, it's almost similar. It's like, okay, I'm going to start with like a 4.2 stroke. Right. And it's like, if I want to do some softer work, I'll go get a 3.5. You know, if I want to do some bolder stuff, I'll go get a 5.0. But it's like, you you learn these things, you know? And there's still, right. there's, it's not like, like, I don't think, like, yeah, probably picking up a rotary out the box and using it is definitely easier. But it's, there's still a learning gap to it, you know? It's still a machine. You're still not used to it. I know it's not traditional, but. Well, I think in the beginning, too, like, we're always encouraging to try everything, even if you don't think you're mm -hmm. going to like it. Yeah. Like, we told you to use every different machine yeah. in the shop. Dude, I was borrowing the floors, Cubans, right. trying, trying to use machines with back weight so, like, I knew what it felt like. You right. know, it's not a coil, but it felt very and similar And then it's kind of like you pick, which might sound silly because it's like, how the fuck does a one-year tattooer know what they want to use for the mm -hmm. rest of your career? But at least getting in the mindset of, like, trying new things. Yeah. You know, because I didn't make the switch on machines until, like, I don't know, six years into tattooing. And I don't think you should like stay stuck, you know, in one thing. Mm -hmm. Like you should always be like checking out new products. And yeah, like, I've gotten like three new machines that all are different strokes. Right. So I could try different things and do right. different but things. But even when you're them. like, yo, like, should I use the, the 4.2, the 5.0? Or the, like my answer is going to be like, I use a 4.2 for everything. Oh, but it's softer and whatever. I'm going to be like, get better with your hand. Yeah, right, like that. Absolutely. I mean, that's like yeah. how I do it. Cause, well, because like, that's the that's the argument where it's like people always like want to know like what machines are using, like what needles right. are using, like all this stuff. And it's like if you're a good tattooer, like you can do good tattoos with like anything. Yeah, and I really believe that. Like I think when it comes to something like like color pigment, like there's some brands are better than others, but yeah. that's like that has nothing to do with tattoo like application. Yeah, sure. Because you know like a I mean? fire color artist could probably put any brand color into your skin. Well, then also, like, because I'll have my boys be like, no, don't tell Cam to just rely on, like, his hand motion. Like, just tell him to get a softer machine. Mm. And I'm like, okay, like, yeah, if you want to do yeah. that. But you're, but he's asking me how I do it. Right. Yeah. And that's how I do it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and if you eventually want to get to that point, why wouldn't you just start now? Yeah. Well, you're going to do the whole soft machine bullshit and yeah, then huh. only to come back <laughs> to, like, improve your, yeah, guess what? Like, you're going to suck in the beginning. It's going to be uncomfortable. Th that would be, like, my argument No, 100%. That. Yeah. And I think, like, I don't know. I like the approach you let me take on tattooing, you know, kind of, like, figuring that out. And I do think, like, starting on the like rotary. Like, use rotary, show up late to work. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> That's what you've learned Bishop, from John? baby. Yeah. <laughs> John's like, get a bishop. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, I know, like, when you first got your 5.0, you, like, you had been using the 4.2 forever, like, since yeah. I had started apprenticing on it. And then you got the 5.0. And yeah, I saw you do like some really cool work with it and almost like still doing super smooth shading with a very aggressive machine looking super similar to 4.2 work. And I'm like, that's sick because he's using a lot more control. It's a lot more like hand pressure. Like it's a lot more technicality while using that. Yeah. And I think that's like almost as essential as, you know, like learning your machine, like the pressure and like, you know, the finesse that comes with it, which was something that I wanted to learn. Like, and yeah. I think it's helped a lot. A lot of it's technical skill. I was actually talking about it with somebody recently. We were at a like a FK event where they're letting people try out their new um the new machine they had. Yeah. Um, and I'm if I'm remembering correctly, it doesn't have like the voltage numbers on it. And like another tattooer was saying it's that like they, colors. Yeah, yeah. Another tattooer was saying they didn't like that, and I was like, man, like the first like power supply I ever had was just a fucking dial. Yeah. Like, no numbers, yeah. no colors, nothing. And, like, the guy I apprenticed under was like, well, you should just know if it sounds right. Yeah, like, feel And it. I still feel that way about rotaries. Like, it, they do sound different at different voltages. And, like... because yeah, the FK will do, like, a 0.5 range or something, right? Like, I this mean, color to this I color is this voltage. It's, like, and blinking colors, you know? like, a certain right. voltage But they were, like, abnormal. talking about how they want to know what voltage their machine is running at. And I'm just like... But, like, there's so many other factors that tell me that. You know what I mean? Yeah, you used to, like, be able to feel, like, the armature bar and stuff and kind of, like... 
feel it out mm-hmm. with the coil. It's not like you can yeah. do that with like you could drive no, the needle into like, your thumb. Like, <laughs> yeah, that feels right. Damn, yeah, I that's feel like I can hear it in my machine. You know yeah. what I mean? It does sound different. And like you can also just see it. Like if I pull a line and I'm like, oh man, it's not like it's not pushing this yeah. needle hard boop, enough. Boop, 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 you know boop, boop, what I mean? Like, and yeah. then you can adjust from there. You don't actually need to know what the number is. Yeah. Right. Can you make but that like, noise again? Boop, 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 boop. Okay, cool. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, my critical sound. Is that That's what it sounds like. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> what machines do you use? Uh, I have been using the Bishop Wand for a minute, the uh, the five point stroke, which like was interesting to because we I don't know I don't know if you take offense to this, but I'd say technique wise we use relatively similar techniques. Yeah, why uh, would I take offense to that? I don't know, because some people like thinking that the, what they do in tattooing no, is very I'm unique so and much special. No, I don't do you. anything original. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like, you know, like you write, you prefer the 4.2, and I'm sure I'd have a good time using it. But it's like, yeah, I like the five stroke, which like people are like, oh, what, like aggressive. And I'm like, I use it for fine line shit all no, the time. No, I was going to say like yeah. that too. Like I, I got my 5.0 for like some bold shit, and I've been using it for super delicate tattoos recently. It's just yeah. like learning how to use that machine. I have it out always. Um, and I'm really only using it if like their skin has started to toughen up, Mm -hmm. if it's an area that has tough skin, Mm -hmm. uh, or if like, I feel like it's just taking too long to like work it in with my 4.2 and then sometimes with like blacks, but it's almost like just turning the voltage up. That's how it feels like when I switch the Mm -hmm. machine, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've never, I've never used them back to back, but like I switched over to, to like pen style machines after I did like my first tattoo convention and I borrowed one from my coworker because um, he was like, oh, he's like, you don't have to like pack tubes and needles for a convention. He's like, just use this machine and bring carts. Yeah. And I did that show. And then I was like, I don't want to set up five machines ever yeah. again. That's Not how once. it started for me. You know yeah, convenient. I mean? yeah. 100%. And I was like the... It's always been, even with switching to like, I know not everybody agrees with this, but I think wireless and wired machines hit differently entirely. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. I don't like when people are like, no, battery packs are just as good. They're not. Right. But again, it was just like a pros cons list where it was like, was like slightly adjusting the way I tattoo to achieve the same results, like worth all the like benefits of being wireless. And it was like, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's like better or worse. It's just like what you prefer. Cause I don't like dragging like a fucking cord everywhere, you know? Yeah. I like my favorite thing about wireless machines is like, you know, there's like just this one line that I would love to pull from a different angle. I love that. I can just like get up and like fucking walk to the other side of the table, pull one line and then like go back. You know what I mean? Like, so I noticed that even though I have no experience with coils, like when we went to Philly, I was like, I can only imagine how much easier this makes it. Like, the whole setup process, the whole travel. It's, like, I can literally fit everything I need into a Pelican case. Yeah. Battery, machine, two machines, four batteries, like, all in one case. It's Yeah, there was even this, like, little time period when, when I was, like, working with Tyler where it was, like, get as many Dan Cubans as you could <laughs> and, like, bring them all to the convention. <laughs> and, like, even before that with, like, coils and tubes and whatever, like, it was so much to bring. And yeah. that was a big and reason like why I stopped see, you color. You can see people's like <laughs> setup before like anybody's even unpacking. Yeah. Like the 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 coil guys, the color guys, they all yeah. have those fucking Huge like trunk. toolbox yeah. trunk things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I'm walking in with my pelican case, like uh. yeah, like, yeah, like a ziplock bag. Yeah, <laughs> like, I like my lunch this weekend. Like I brought like a fucking like a like a tray essentially, like a little like eight by twelve tray with like needles in my machines and like yeah. that's it. Yeah, it was easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. Just so you can experience it. I have it. been looking at Cubans recently. You can just use mine. Did you, you get like it back it. from Ricky? Oh, I don't know if I did. Yeah, I think he still has it. <laughs> I love my Cubans so much, I'd lose them <laughs> all the time. I do like that that turquoise one. You I know? just like how it looks. <laughs> they yeah. look fucking sick. Yeah. I think, I mean, I, when I used it, it was fucking fun. Yeah. I've done like a super traditional piece with it with like a 25 mag whip shading and yeah, I've there, done and like fine line tons of shit. artists that do fine line and 3RL whip and 3RL smooth like with well, you know, there's, Mac truck. there's still portrait artists that use coil machines yeah, like, you know, like uh, old west coast dudes are still I mean? using them like, I've seen beautiful soft blends done with well coils. honestly I think coils are softer than rotaries mm-hmm. I don't think Dan Cubans are right you know well I mean? that's like, the cool thing about coils right is like the the build of the machine matters so much. Whereas like yeah. pen style machines, it's like a lot. Cause they have that give, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it's almost like a handicap. They're a little confusing, but they're cool. What's confusing? The Cubans. Yeah. What's confusing about it? 
Um, how to spell them. Yeah. <laughs> Cuban, Cuban. I don't know how to say it either. <laughs> what the capital It's is. like all like the different, like things like the Mojo Box, the Sidewinder, and all these like different machines. And I know he like explains in all the descriptions like how they're used, but they like change a lot just by like how you put the clip cord in them, like red side up or down, you know, like changes how they work. So it's like a definitely a little bit more to learn with those than the rotaries. I mean, even though they are rotaries, I mean, like pen style machines. Yeah, it's funny to hear that because it's like not complicated at all. But that's also coming from like an era where we used exactly coils. Yeah, you were where used like to you like could tune everything. Yeah, you know, like I remember I'd be fucking with my machine for five ten minutes sometimes before to get it like where I wanted. I had to build my first machine. Right. The guy I apprenticed under gave me his, like, spare parts box and was like, okay. Right. You've seen machines. Build one now. You like, actually The first one I built, he that. was like, absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. Try again. <laughs> yeah. We did that with Cam as well. But even, like, buying, like, built coils mm-hmm. and, like, fucking with them. Just you know? Them yeah. Like, yeah. They're like, expensive. Like, I want to collect them all, but they're so expensive. Man, fucking... Machines being over a thousand dollars is like I don't know. I find that so offensive. I'm I, like, this I is dropped like stupid. Well, let's, talk, let's talk about that. <laughs> well, because I, f- to me, it almost makes sense because like prices of tattoos have raised. Yeah, me, right? we we kind of like touched about this. Me and Scott did too. How he was like, yo, like a good set of coils twelve years ago was like four hundred bucks. I was like. That to like today's time is like twelve hundred probably, you know. Well, it's for like, like a s- one like coil a machine. No, it was, yeah, or essentially it was like something like that. But he was like, to be honest, like twelve hundred now is probably like same yeah, like as ten years ago for like a really good coil, you were gonna pay. Mm, let's say fifteen years ago, it was like you know two fifty, two twenty, yeah. and then it went up to like three hundred to four hundred area. Yeah, maybe ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Um. And you can get like the, the, the standard. But no, no, I'm curious on your your end of it because I'm like I'm just like oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. Like the price of everything's raising all the time, but you obviously feel different. I think because because to me, making coils is a fucking art form. You know what I right. mean? Like they're handmade. They're made with a lot of love. There's like so much thought that goes into the planning of them because very small things completely change how the machine runs. Right. And then you have mass produced pen style machines with like essentially no tech you know what i mean like the, right. like i feel like the the tech aspects that are improving in in tattooing is like <clears throat> you know like needles needles are better yeah. pigments are better like there is like tech that's improving in tattooing but like a pen style rotary machine is still just a fucking rotary you know motor like converting rotational motion to linear motion on the drive bar you know what i mean like the actual like that stuff is not really changing or improving like it might be running better but I don't know. It just blows my mind where I'm like, I don't understand how you're like mass producing this like very simple thing and then asking for so much money. You know, I feel like a sense. lot of the a lot of it has a lot more to do with like marketing and hype and branding. And like I'm always the first person to joke about like you can sell anything to a tattooer if you say it's free tattooing. Yeah, like yeah. We're a very dumb group of people. Yeah. <laughs> um, like in a fun way. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like when I like when I see machines passing like the thousand dollar mark, I'm like, I Especially as somebody that really truly believes that, like, while a good machine makes your job easier, like, it, it doesn't make you a better tattooer. Right. You know? And so to, like, kind of, like, see people coming into tattooing and trying stuff for the first time and being like, oh, I need this, like, $1,400 machine to do a good tattoo. Yeah, you don't, like... And you don't, especially when you're, like, starting out and, like, yeah. you don't have that money. Um, I was talking to somebody, a client of mine, and they were telling me that one of their friends was apprenticing. And that, you know, they were saving up to get a machine so that they could start doing tattoos. And that this was actually super cute. Like a whole group of them were going to like, you know, give her her like whatever $50 or whatever she was being allowed to charge for tattoos to cover supplies. Like they were all going to like prepay it so she could buy this machine. And I was like, oh, like how much is she saving up? Because like I'm trying to judge like what machine I think this person's getting. And they were like, oh, yeah, she needs like $1,200. And I was like, no, you fucking don't. (laughs) I mean, dude, like you can get those standard Bishop wands for like 600 bucks. It's like all you need. Yeah, I know, and like the that new FK machine, not to be like an ad for FK, but I think that was six hundred bucks. The one, bucks. the one, right? And the one with the, the, right? the, the lithium like the battery in it. Yeah, the built-in yeah. lithium batteries and all like the built-in How battery long does pack it last? and all that shit. No, it's like 
it's got like a battery that yeah, you it's, take. Yeah, you ever use like a Cheyenne where it's like they fucking have like batteries that you put in and out. Oh, weird. It's like charge the whole one thing, of those like C a, batteries, like the big bulky yeah, one. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's like in the machine. Uh, so yeah, I think it's you, like you can take a it out, but they last amount. like all yeah, day. I think that they said like 12 hours with that one. And it is like a rechargeable yeah. big battery, I mean, but but it's like an Xbox controller. Yeah. Like if it dies, like you just put a new battery in and just keep going. That's weird. But that one is supposed to be like their affordable option now. Right. And like yeah. I used it and I, you know, I got to play around. I like on fake skin, which is so different than tattooing a real person. But like I was like, yeah, this is like a, this to me is like probably like a great seems starter like machine. Seems like a fair price point. It seems like, yeah. you know, like that. I don't know. That like tech is like really standard now. So I mean, like to charge so much for it is I like. I feel like it's the machines with the batteries included or like what's expensive. It's the batteries that they're getting you on. Well, the batteries those, are like four or five hundred bucks. That's what I'm saying. Like, just like two criticals are five hundred bucks. They're two fifty yeah. a piece. So it's like realistically machine machines only 600 it's like they're getting you on the batteries because they offer like the ability to just buy the machines and use them with the rca cord and like that's still the way a more affordable option yeah but i've bought like yeah. you know knockoff batteries and had no problem yeah using exactly them. amazon's I mean? got them like, for like 30 50 oh, bucks yeah. yeah you want to talk about amazon let's talk about the disposable <laughs> tattoo pen that shit slaps have you ever used it no but uh, packs no. color really well if anyone's looking for like a a couple of months ago, we were like brainstorming, creating a disposable machine, but then it was like, oh, it's crazy. We the the concept waste. of using a, a disposable machine is, is terrible and yeah. nobody should do that. Yeah. But I, I'm, I bought it cause I wanted to try it <laughs> yeah. and it like packed pretty fucking heavy. Right. It's not a problem. There well, was I've actually definitely a couple used of us that like, were, like cheap fucking bullshit. machines. Yeah. yeah. And had a great fucking time with them. Right. Which, cause, and that kind of goes back to more, if, it's more about, it's a technical skill. Like, you know, the tool is just that. It's a tool and it's about how you use it. Yeah. At the last convention, I was handed a fake machine and they're like, use it. And I did and fucking it was good. ripped that. that yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, fine. You know, I've used, yeah, like I said, knockoff battery packs before yeah. that cost fucking 80 bucks. And you yeah. know what I mean? And it's like stuff like that where it's like, I, I just need to see like, how do I say this? I understand like what the actual like cost of what you're selling is. So like trying to understand why it's marked up so much. Is it just marked up that much just as like a marketing thing and just to make something exclusive? You know, like my favorite example is always um, like Peloton. I know this sounds like a weird segue, but like the original point of Peloton was to be like this incredibly accessible thing. Um, it was really cheap and like the company was failing and then they just won 180 and made it super exclusive and super expensive. And that company does really well, but nobody wanted a Peloton when it was right. an cheap. affordable thing. Yeah. Right. So it's like, is that what, is that what I'm paying for when I see like a really expensive, like a $250 battery pack, yeah. you know, or is there like actually something about it? Cause like, I'll be honest, like the $80 one I had, um, like eventually just genuinely started falling apart. Yeah. But like when I wanted to see if I liked wireless, I was like, I'm not going to buy like a $250 yeah. battery pack to see if I like it. I True. will say the criticals are pretty good. I've never had a problem with mine. Yeah. And these are good questions. Danny and I are actually touring all these factories we're talking about in three days. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask all these questions. Yeah. That's right. We'll ask them specifically. That. Like, oh, what are you charging yeah. people for? Be but there's always like hidden costs that like you might not think about or... Or the different agendas that you're talking about with like raising prices so people think it's better. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these, a lot of these mass produced things do have research and development, which is really fucking expensive. Oh, yeah. You know, and then also they have to pass certain regulations and like testing. Right. And, and like I, but, and then on all that, right? Like I'm happy to buy stuff from <clears throat> companies, like whatever it is, like clothing companies, right? Like yeah. I'm happy to like spend more money on clothes. If it's like, I know that like the chain of supply is as ethical as you can try to be. Like it's hard to be an ethical person in 2023. Generally. It's yeah. Like very hard to avoid slave labor in your life. Like I have a cell phone, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, but, like, so if I can, like, understand that, like, oh, like, this company, like, yeah, like, this product could be $80, but it's $250, but you take good care of your employees. You know what I mean? Like, for me, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I, I would like know. people to be paid living wages. <laughs> yeah. It, that's a whole, like, different topic. I don't even know if yeah, I want to yeah, get into that. Yeah, that's, like, way too deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get into that. But, uh, no, I, I but understand so what you're saying. so far as, like, hidden costs, right, right? right? Like, why is this so expensive? And it's like, well, that this way our employees can feed their families on I one do, job. Like, a lot of... Like, uh, companies are, like, in our industry are, like, made in America, too. Right. Which I know is, like, another 
reason Assembled for things. Assembled in America. Yeah. Well, because like with yeah, a coil, Assembled it's just America. like, <laughs> yes. it's like, hey, I'm just going to build this coil and privately sell it. Mm -hmm. With these bigger companies, it's like, hey, I'm going to sell this like out in the open, mass produce and yeah. whatever. It, they're held to different standards, mm -hmm. you know? But I, the, what I'm saying is I don't know. Yeah. Like what you're saying, I don't know, mm -hmm. you know? So it would be cool to get some more information on that and figure it out. Now, I wonder, like, let's say, let's say Danny and I go toward these factories and they're like, this, this, and this is why the price point is this. And let's say they even have a small margin. They're like, we don't actually make a lot of money on it. And then I call you and I'm like, yo, Andy, this is what I figured out. Like their cost is almost as much as they're selling it for. Would you, would that change your mind on that? Yeah, probably. You'd be like, oh, I'm going to start buying and that I think, shit. But I, think that comes, <laughs> but I think that comes with watching machines get more and more expensive. You know, like I've been tattooing five years. It's to me not that very long. Right. And it's like I've watched the price of machines like double and triple. And like yeah. I can't believe when I see machines. Like I said, when I see machines come out over $1,000, it's just like I've, where, I've only been why? in the industry two years and I've seen it. I remember like when I first got in the industry, like most expensive machine was like just the normal flux. And it was like 900 to 1000 and it's like now I see machines 13, 14. Right, that's the know? thing. Like, like a thousand I've even was seen, topping out. I've even yeah, seen I remember increase. thinking like, damn, that's expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And like, but is it just that simple that it's like somebody did it and then like those machines sold and then they went, oh, okay, like people are willing to spend that much. And so then the price, you know what I mean? It's like yeah, how glove yeah, yeah. prices never came back down because they were like, oh, well, you guys have to buy these, huh? And it's No, like, 100% cool. people <laughs> saw the path that tattooing was going on. They're like, that's a fucking opportunity and I'm going to make money on that. Of course, of course. Any fast growing industry, we see that over and over and over again. And it can be tough to like, you know, look through that and like, hey, what's like genuine? What's like, who is just in this to make money and, and deciding like how you're going to respond to that. That That's tough. You know, and we've seen that a lot of times in tattooing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like, um, you know, if tattoo adjacent or direct like brands and shops and stuff it's like is it owned by a tattoo like you know what i mean like i yeah. find that interesting like i like knowing who puts conventions on before i do them mm. you know what i mean i'm like who is actually putting this on so like yeah. the show i just did last week in saskatoon saskatchewan canada um like i met the chick who puts it on jess and she's fucking well it's like a group of people who put it on it's like sponsored by a show but she did most of the organizing right and i like got to like hang out and talk to her and it's like She's like a permanent makeup artist who wanted to learn how to tattoo. And instead of just like starting to tattoo after being like a permanent makeup artist, she's like doing an apprenticeship right now Cool. after being like, you know, right. tattoo adjacent for like so yeah, long. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, dude, that's fucking sick. Like yeah. you act like you get it. Like mm -hmm. that this is a different art, like a different technique, different art form, everything. Just like yeah. respect for the industry. Yeah. Right. Industry. And like when I go to shows like that, that are like put on by individuals who are tattooers or like people who really love tattooing, like, I feel like the convention's entirely different. Like the focus 100% feels like it's on like a good experience for the artist. Yeah, I'll go back and forth about it because if you're a tattooer, I don't really expect you to be good at an event as an event planner. Okay. Just like sure. if you're a tattooer, I don't expect you to be good at engineering products. Mm -hmm. Like that whole like made by tattooers for tattooers. It's like, Y'all wouldn't use any machine that any of the guys in the shop made here, <laughs> yeah. you know? But I think they can give that mindset or that experience as a tattooer to help improve whatever mm -hmm. they're trying to do. So, like, I think a convention with, like, an event coordinator and a tattooer would do really well. I think individually, I might be a little bit nervous. Like, if it was only an event planner or if it was only a tattooer. So, like, my specific example, this is, like, maybe one of my favorite things I've ever seen done, and I've never seen it done anywhere else, right? So, the the supply company that sponsored the show, like, teamed up with Fusion yeah. to have inks available to artists. So, like, let's say you're doing, like, a walk-up and you need color and you didn't bring color. You could just take, like, they had paper plates and ink caps, and you could just, like, take whatever color you needed for that one tattoo wow, and yeah. then go do it instead cool. of, like, buying a whole fucking bottle of ink right, that they, you don't yeah. need or want. And then right? you gotta bring it home. And I'm like, this was, like, 100% a tattooer thought of this. You know yes. what I mean? And yeah. it, like, was a, like, genuinely as a tattooer, I'm like, fuck yeah, fusion inks. Yeah, like, yeah. you guys <laughs> get it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that, to me, does actually build brand loyalty. I'm like... That's yeah. fucking sick. Yeah, that makes you, like, reconsider, like, oh, if I'm going to buy a color, I think I'm just going to go with this company. Yeah, right? Like, that's the stuff that actually, like, matters. And, like, seeing stuff like that where I'm, like, you care about, like, this art form and tattooers. You know what right. I mean? Because, like, I've done conventions where I'm, like, this is a super tight money grab. Like, right. awesome. Glad I'm here to help out. Yeah, I like similar 
kind of thing. Like when we were in Philly, and I went up to like the Bishop booth and I went to like buy some needles. And uh, I forgot the guy's name, but he was like, he gave me like six sample packs. He's like, yo, I want you to try all of these. I bet it was James. Uh, yeah. Was it James? Well, you know that super handsome dude from Bishop? Oh, like, James. Yeah, 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 James, yeah. I remember him. Yeah, he gave me a couple of needles, and they were they were sick. And I was like, yeah, this is like the company I want to work with. Oh, yeah, James shit. is the best. Yeah, and like yeah. I want to like, when I go to a convention event, a guest artist spot, whatever, like I do want to be appreciated, you know, mm-hmm. and I want to be respected. And, and I want like little things like that that are like beneficial as an artist. That's like what I want. But I think the side that's not talked about is, like, if we're asking for that respect, we also have to respect the event. Because every fucking time Mm -hmm. I go to a convention and I leave, at least half the convention is trash. Yeah, like, artists don't Booths are fucked up and, like, people are bad to the clients and, like, whatever. So, and I'm always, like, trying to look at, like, both sides of it. So, like... I'm going to clean up my booth. I'm going to yell at Cam and whoever else that it doesn't have the experience. Like pick up everything off the ground, put it in your fucking box. Like, like the way you found it. Yeah. You know? And it's like, cause I know those same shit bags that are destroying the convention are the ones like we want respect and they were not good to Mm -hmm. the artists and like whatever. And it's like, as an artist, both ways, fuck you, you know? And it's like, cause you're not like, it's bad for the industry. Like, and then what's going to happen is it's so much easier to see the negative. So the event planner or the location or the client is going to see how you're treating the space. Yeah. And it's just bad for everyone. hundred yeah. percent. Like, And these non-tattooers are going to be like, fuck tattooers. They're messy. They destroy shit, you know, back yeah. to the old mentality. Which yeah. I saw when we were leaving. Yeah, bro. It's like, fucking everywhere, it's disgusting. dude. Disgusting, yeah. Yeah. Tattooers are gross. Wow. Well. <laughs> We're oh. clean but gross. <laughs> Some oh, of us. Man. Wow, the shirt is actually really nice. If you haven't already, you need to check out the model citizen apparel.com. It has the best tattoo clothing I've ever seen. And I'm quite a critic when it comes to fashion, clothing, whatever. The design has to be cool and the material has to be comfortable, at least form fitting. They have a range of styles from vintage to modern. They're continuing to work with new artists featuring new designs and articles of clothing. You need to check out this company, themodelcitizenapparel.com, or you can check out their social media, which is Model Citizen Apparel. It's the best. I forgot what I was, I had something else to talk about, but then I got upset with Tattooers. (laughs) Tattooers. Tattooers. <laughs> I forgot. Because it all kind of like relates together, right? It's like very much like you get what you give, right? Like, so if you're treating events like you don't give a fuck about them, if you're treating clients like you don't give a fuck about them, like why should anybody give a fuck about you? Right. You know? Right. But tattooing in general, it's something that I personally like about tattooing. And it's like one of, th- one of the things I actually talk about when I would never take on an apprentice. I don't think I'm uh, even remotely qualified. But like when people ask about stuff like that, like the genuine advice I give to people is like, uh, tattooing doesn't care about you and like that that's just true and always going to be true like if I quit tattooing tomorrow like sure I'll have some bummed out clients with in progress stuff who are like man this fucking sucks but like they're going to find someone else to finish their tattoo they're going to continue collecting work from other people like my career ending is fucking meaningless like it doesn't matter you know what I mean yeah. it's like a very self motivated um I think to achieve the level of success that a lot of people admire, it's like very self-motivated. Like I really enjoy getting to spend time with tattooers with, you know, 15, 20 plus year careers that I really admire. And like whenever I actually get to talk to people like that, it's the thing that's like always very clear to me is it's people who like really fucking care about tattooing as much as they always have. You know what I mean? Like kind of despite whatever the fuck it is that people want to get jaded about, you know, it's like, you just work through that, especially because, like, I feel like, you know, kind of the whole, like, whatever old school tattooer versus new school tattooer, like, mentality right now where it's like, oh, you know, like, all these, like, soft new tattooers, you've never had to deal with this, you never had to deal with that bullshit, but it's like, right, but, like, I have friends who've been tattooing 30 years who are, like, good to their clients and love tattooing and, like, you know what I mean? Like, so that's, yeah. like, a v- it's, like, very individual and personal. But it's also... And this is, like, my thing with, like, OG tattooers, because that's been said to me directly. Like, you've never had to deal with this. You've never had to deal with that. And I'm like, yeah, but didn't you do what you had to do to make sure we never had to deal with that? You right. know? Or or that, but also, like, the the idea that, like, you now have the opportunity to not deal with that. Like, um, right. the shop I'm at right now, like, I 
almost positive everybody's been tattooing there like a decade aside from me you know and like worked like everybody worked at like hardcore walk-in shops where it's like saying no to a client or to anything was like not an option right but it's like you don't have to like keep carrying that with you like that's a choice you know what i mean like you can now tell clients like you know especially if you're if you're busy like that always blows my mind like tattooers who are busy and are taking on work that they really don't want to be doing. I'm like, I, yeah. I don't understand who this is benefiting. Yeah, It's not good for you. It's not good for your client. I don't ever think doing a tattoo you don't want to do is good for your client. Correct. Yeah. You like, know? give it to someone that would enjoy it. Yeah. There's right? Especially if you're overflow. Yeah. Especially, right, if you have, like, more work than you can handle. Yeah. You know? And if you don't have more work than you hand, can handle, like, I don't know why you're complaining about doing any tattoos. Aren't you just fucking stoked to tattoo? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, part of me like loves the grumpy old people. Like, like I could sit next to an old timer and just talk shit back and forth to them the whole time. Yeah, that resonates with you. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes I'm also not in the mood. I think my ideal tattoo or like someone to share a booth with or like an experience with is someone that understands all the basics of tattooing and like the manners and mm-hmm. like, like shit that I almost like, yeah, like of course don't disrespect your client. Of course be on time. Of course, like try to work with them on the design. Like, cool, you got all that down, and, like, now that we know all the rules, like, let's talk shit, be ridiculous, and have fun. Right, but that, right, but it's coming from a place of having fun, right? But right, you and know the what foundation I'm, I'm, set. I'm talking about, like, just fucking any industry. Complainers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, real-ass complainers yeah. who get in their own way yeah. and, like, refuse to see that. Um, Dude, we have a couple artists that I, I really love them to death, and I see them at conventions a lot, and they come up, and every, at the end of every day, they just complain. They're like, my client, this, this, the design is cold, I didn't bring the book, whatever. Ever. And I'm just like, you should quit tattooing. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them that every day yeah. is my advice. You should quit. Like, you're not happy, you know? Well, and that, like, weird idea that, like, being a... I don't know. I've, like, talked to some people about this kind of recently where they're, like... People seem to think, like, finding success in tattooing is easier than finding success in any other art form. And I just don't think that's true at all. I think tattooing is just, like, really visible right now. But, like, you know, I again, like, I think most people's aspirations are, like like quite high, like 1% yeah. of like whatever field you're interested in, right? Everybody wants yeah. that like one to be that 1% yeah. person. This is definitely like one of the more common art forms too and more attainable to like the common public. See, I don't think that's true I don't know though. If it's true. You know what I mean? Like I think to to be at like a certain level as a tattooer, like I think it's just as much work to be at that level as like an illustrator or a painter or someone that sells prints or like pick any no, other. No, 100%. Like, I no, think I think I, I'm saying it's like it's easier for the client. Right. Not not for us. I'm saying like wait. So say the statement again, because now I'm confused. Mm-hmm. So it's like you're saying like I'm not saying it. You're saying it. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you want to be the best at what you do and everything. Like right. everyone's like that in every career choice. Ideally. Um, but I'm saying like artistic wise, like we're so open to the public, and I feel like it's easier for like the general people to get a piece of art by like us versus like like an illustrator or you know like somebody who's does like different forms of art i think i understand what you're you're saying like tattooing is growing rapidly yeah i i don't know if i can think of an art form that's growing I th- yeah faster. that's like tattooing and is like, a very visible and like people so it's in the public eye and i think it's like an art form that people want all most. this content is like coming out about like how to schedule a tattoo how to do a tattoo how to get one how to yeah. whatever like and it's like out yeah like i've never seen like videos or content that's like if you would like a commission painting yeah you know do you want to be a comic book artist like you just don't see it that I understand. Yeah. And it, it can feel like it's the most popular art form because it's growing so fast. Right now, I think But it's so. just a new art form. Yeah. You know, right. like all these other ones have been around for fucking Forever. centuries. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, I don't know. It, uh, I think with social media and being able to like kind of promote yourself and like being so much more like accessible and visible, like a lot of things seem maybe easier than they are. Like, I guess the comparison I would make is like, there's like tons of people are actors, but very few people are A-list celebrities. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's yeah, like that's that. a good comparison. That's like true in tattooing as well. Like lots and lots of tattooers. Like, yeah. you know, you, you can make like a good living and you can be happy. But like, if you want. Where do you think Cam's at? If you compared him to like an actor? Oh. Like, um, it, like maybe like the top is like, any movie he puts out, everyone sells out, mm-hmm. or like working Bob at Schneider. working at the <laughs> diner, telling you know his yeah, I host gig, that I got he's a gig an actor. Tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's free. You guys should come. Uh, I mean, I guess that depends uh, how booked out you are, right? 
Well, what do you th- where do you think he is? Like, did did one commercial once tells everyone he's an actor? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not here enough. Uh, <laughs> make fun of Cam. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I already told you it was not going to be a good guess. He was like so stoked. He's like, "We just like rip on Cam if you don't know what to say." And I was like, "I'm not the one for that." <laughs> no, but I like. It's okay. It doesn't bother me. Oh no, I, I don't feel anymore. <laughs> I'm, I am. I, I, I am I understand now numb. That you've been broken by John. It's fine. <laughs> no, not broken. Reborn. <laughs> Rebuilt. Yeah, late to work. Yeah. Yeah. Bionic man. We can rebuild him. Thank you. <laughs> You know who were really nice to him? Logan. Logan. Do you ever feel like, how come you guys don't fuck with him as much as you fuck with me? I gave up. You gave up? <laughs> yeah. I'm in like, I'm like Good, close. it's none I'm, of your fucking business. I'm close into like Adrian's shoes where I just don't care what happens to the newbies. Dude, I think Adrian got it worse than you. 100%. To be but, honest, and I'll never admit this to him. Except when he listens to the podcast. I, I know 100%, oh, I know so 100% he, he probably want. had the worst apprenticeship that you probably... At the end of it, I was like, I think it went too far. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were like, I think I like, you broke him past recovery. Like and then like with, <laughs> like with you, I would like get to that level and consciously be like, don't do it. You did take it. Like, that's also like an interesting part of like kind of old school new school mentality, right? It's like people who think that like, you know, if you weren't fucking like violated in your yeah. apprenticeship, you didn't have a good or like a real yeah, apprenticeship. Yeah, yeah. I was definitely you know what more, I mean? and that's glo- it. I was I'm more brainwashed. Like, that's in my head. Yeah, <laughs> I was definitely more. So it was, it's tough to change that, honestly. Yeah. You know, we joke about it all the time, but like that—that's what it is in my head. That's how I was taught, and yeah. I think with the TikToks, I was like a little bit more globally embarrassed than Adrian was. <laughs> I think Bro, the clown video. <laughs> well, and, but here's the, here's he the thing: up. like he likes that. Like he's been through like all the horrible shit, like throughout his apprenticeship and all that. Like he knows it's over, and he knows like he has a choice. He's now. like off, and Danny will be like, "You got to come in. We're gonna dress you up like a girl. Be there in ten. Yeah, yeah, be yeah. And he embraces. Be there in ten. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's different. Like, but do you think like, that? He, do you think that the treatment is different or do you think that your ego is just bigger than his in terms of like uh, embarrassment? Maybe. Um, I know that's me me and Adrian both have like very different aspects and like point of views on tattooing. Right. So like, like everyone does, you know, um, like I definitely felt. And I definitely know that I'm probably more confident in my art than he is, you know? So, like, there's ways that you guys counterbalance And he that. might be more confident in, like, his self-image? Exactly. Okay. So, you know, it's, like, it's different. So, you both, I don't want to say this, but like you attack us in different ways. Not, like, bad as intact. Like, but physically. Like, yeah, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you just come maybe, from behind and may, Maybe his more <laughs> physical and right? mine more mental, you know? Right. It's, like, it's just different. Like, we should talk shit about that on the Patreon. Yeah. Cam, take us out. Thank you guys for joining us on this week's of Unemployable Podcast. Thank you again, Andy, for joining us. Thank we really you, appreciate it. Where do I work, Cam? What? What did you say? Where do I work? Oh, where does she work? I forgot what this place is called. Are you fucking I'm scared? the worst. I'm Thanks. sorry, dude. I'm so embarrassed right now. I am too. Just fire him now on the podcast. It's fine. Bro. Good, good ink? No. Close. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm like, I can't remember names, dude. <laughs> If you had to guess, if you could make up your own name for the shop she worked at, what would it be? Good heart. <laughs> so you would name a tattoo shop? What would you name Good a tattoo heart? shop? Yeah, I'm well, so sorry to change this. Hard I feel like that show. was a compliment to you, though. Yeah, it was nice. I mean, Good Ink was like a combo of my name and the shop name. So Yeah, you're not too far off. All right, what yeah, would you name a tattoo ones. shop? Probably like one of those shots that just say tattoo shop <laughs> above it. No, but they have real names. Like even if your sign just says tattoo, the shop has a name. Camelot. And there's nothing that matters more. Or sorry, there's nothing that matters less than the name of a tattoo shop. No matter what it is, it can't have like the word black in it. I agree. I feel like so many shops do that. I agree. Or noir. Yeah. Uh, no black. <sighs> Bye. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. We're all set. Cool, what after we're using? Sanitary. That's awesome. I hear that heals everything. Heals everything. Heals everything. John, can-
Can Sanoderm heal the ugly on my face? Are you f***ing serious? <laughs>